Hey, it's Matt from Tradesman Digital Marketing. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to edit an ad group inside Google Ads. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to edit everything inside your ad group and everything you really should be editing. Uh, there's a few things I don't normally edit inside of an ad group, and I would recommend you don't either. I don't edit extensions. I don't edit um, devices, uh, ad schedule. You can actually edit certain ads to run on certain times. This is just too minute when it comes to ad group the vast majority of the time. So I break it down to three main things you should be editing inside your ad groups. Now, the first one is the actual ad group. You can edit the name. You can edit uh, how many ad groups are actually in your campaign, but that's at the ad group level. You can change its name. It's very simple to do. Uh, you can edit the ads. I would definitely recommend editing the ads, always trying to A B test them. You can edit the landing pages you're actually sending traffic to, and you can edit the keywords, everything else, audiences, you know, time schedules, everything like that. I leave to the campaign level. It's so much easier to manage that way. Uh, if we get too minute at the actual ad group level, you could have, you know, several dozen ad groups, and then you're spending so much time going through every single ad group, making sure the audiences are set up right, making sure the ad schedule is set up right. It's just too much time to spend on such a minute thing and really the vast majority of the time you don't need to you're just going to waste a lot of time inside your ad groups so to start off how do we actually go about editing our ad groups inside google ads and the first thing we have to do for our ad groups is change the name so if we want to change the name all we have to do is actually click on our campaign here and then come to ad groups and all we have to do is actually hit our little pencil icon here right next to the actual name of the campaign and all we have to do is actually spell this correctly because it wasn't spelled correctly and then hit save and we're good to go. And there's a few other things we can do inside of our campaign setting that we could turn on and on ad groups. All you have to do is click the little green icon here. It could be gray, it could be removed, uh, but chances are all you have to do is click on the green button and turn it off if you don't want to run that ad group. It's very simple, very easy to do. Now, actually going inside of our ad groups, there are three things we can edit. The landing pages, the keywords, and the ads. And the first thing I like to start off with is the actual keywords. So what we're gonna do is click on the actual ad group we want to edit. So let's do pull installation for this one actually backyard pool. no 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 pull installation I like pull installation let's do that one and as you can see we have a whole bunch of keywords and we can change these keywords in a variety of ways we can change the match type so if we want to change the match type make it much more expansive we can use broad match we can use phrase match and you're going to get a lot more search volume with these types of match types uh, that being said if we have limited search volume I would definitely recommend doing that in most scenarios but the vast majority of cases um, I would use exact match uh, exact match over the past few months has been really Really doing absolutely phenomenal for our accounts we use everything in exact match uh, unless we have a really big issue with search volume everything stays in exact match and we're really able to narrow down the keywords we want to target uh, so if we want to change our match type all you have to do is come over here to phrase match click on that and then come down to exact match and we successfully changed our match type to exact match and now we're only going to show for keywords really related to swimming pool installation and Google again has updated their match type recently so it's a lot more lenient than it used to be when it comes to exact match, but it's still a lot um, a lot less lenient than phrase and broad match, which will really target anything at this point. Now, if we want to edit the actual keyword inside here, all we have to do is click on the little pencil icon and we can just, let's put swimming pool, I don't know, company installation. I don't know. <laughs> this is just an example. Uh, and then all we have to do is hit save and we're good to go. And we successfully changed the keyword. If we want to turn off a keyword, all we have to do is hit the little green button here. And then this pops up and we can remove it. So this will no longer be in the actual account or we can just hit pause. Normally I just hit pause so it keeps all the data in the actual account. You can see it. And if you want at any point, you can turn it back on by just hitting the pause button and hitting enable. Uh, you can also check mark off all of these are the ones you want to check mark off and you could change the match types in bulk. So you could change them all to exact match. You could change them all to broad match, whatever you want to do. You can change the keyword text as well. So maybe there's just one certain keyword you want to swap out. So maybe instead of uh, you have a ad group that's like pool contractors, all of the keywords inside of the account is contractors. All you have to do is just change the text from contractors to maybe like pool builders and it'll swap out all the text uh, very quickly and very effectively. So that's one of the things I really like doing. It saves a whole bunch of time inside your account. Generally, my recommendation for actually turning on and off a keyword is if you have one conversion or less, uh, 
after 10 clicks, I turn the keyword off, depending on how much search volume. Again, if we're really low in search volume, I might get a, give it a little bit more leniency, especially if the keyword has a lot of leniency. But generally, one or less conversions overall, I'm going to turn the keyword off, and I'm going to try and get keywords with two leads or higher uh, for 10 clicks. And it, generally, if you have this process running for a couple months, you're going to have a conversion rate of well over 20% for your account, and you're going to be doing very well because all of your keywords will be getting two or more uh, leads for every 10 clicks, which you know brings you well over 20% conversion rates, and your account should be doing really well. Now, the final thing for search keywords is actually going into your search term report. Even if you're using exact match, which is really strict compared to phrase and broad match, you're still going to get search terms you don't want to appear for. So what you have to do, at least on a weekly basis, is come down here to search terms. This will pop up with a whole bunch of search terms people have typed in that your ad has appeared for. And you're essentially going to scroll through all the search terms, find the ones you don't like, come over here to negative keywords. Uh, we're gonna hit the big blue plus icon, and then at the campaign level or the ad group level, I generally recommend the campaign level, we're gonna type in keywords we don't want. So maybe it's pool products. All we have to do is type in pool products. And I would probably add this as a broad match just because it's very vague and we don't want to appear for products of pool, we want to appear for pool installation. But if this was say example, uh, pool installation products, I might wanna put that as exact match because Google, we don't get, wanna give Google too much leeway because then it might think like, hey, I don't want to appear for anything related to pool installation. Uh, we still do, uh, but we just don't want to appear for that specific search term. So in that case, I would put it in exact match. But for this one, I would put it in broad match. Uh, you don't have to put anything around it. You just have to actually leave it blank. If you want to put it in exact match, all you have to do is put brackets around it, and you've successfully put it in broad match. Just come down here to save, and you've added it to your negative keyword list, as you can see here. The next thing we can edit inside of our ad group is the actual ads. So I recommend having at least three ads for every single ad group. As we can see here, there's a call ad in here. Uh, this was just a test. I wouldn't recommend putting ad call ads and responsive search ads together. Uh, but having three responsive search ads in your ad group is definitely a very good idea to do uh, as it allows Google to A-B test, find a super high click-through rate the vast majority of the time, and have a better chance at having a higher quality score, which brings down cost per click, which allows you to get more leads and a lot more account success. Now, if we want to edit our ads inside Google Ads, all we have to do is actually hit the little edit icon here, and this will bring in us into the actual ad. Now, there's a few important things to actually look at inside your ad. Uh, up here, as we can see all the keywords, we have pool installation and ground pool installation, as well as their actual match types, uh, the ad group name, so pool installation, and the actual rating Google gives us. So as you can see, ad strength here is excellent. Does this always have to be excellent? No, it doesn't, but it is a pretty good guideline on what Google wants inside of an ad. I would generally aim for good or excellent when actually making an ad, and that should give you a very uh, strong chance of having a high click-through rate and having a very successful ad. Now we have our final URL here, which is where we're actually going to be sending traffic after they click on the ad. As you can see here, we can click on the actual, that's actually kind of under my face. <laughs> uh, what we have to do is hit the desktop if you want to see the desktop version of the ad and hit mobile version of the ad. We can also see all the different types of variations. Google is going to try with it. But the final URL is where we're sending traffic. So I would recommend having a dedicated landing page for this and then sending it out to you know a dedicated landing page for pool installation. Uh, this generally converts the highest and gets you the best results. When it comes to display path, this is the actual display path that is going to show up. So as you can see here in our ad, we have title pool slash pool installation. Um, this really allows for a little bit more customization. A lot of people don't take the time to do this and it makes your ad just a little bit more unique and a little bit more specific to the customer's problem and just makes your ad look a lot more professional in my opinion and it generally leads to a higher click-through rate even though it is just a slight change. If you can answer the customer's problem just slightly better than the other person or the competitor next to you, chances are they're gonna click on your ad instead of theirs. Now, when it comes to headlines, we can scroll down. If we wanna change headlines, all we have to do is click on this. Uh, in ground pool installation near me, that's too much. Uh, but all we have to do is just type that in and we can switch our headlines. It's very simple. It, you also have the option of actually pinning headlines. I don't recommend doing this. And essentially what pinning does is making sure this headline always appears in a certain spot. So if you always wanted the brand name of your company to appear in the very first spot, you can choose to do so. But I generally don't recommend it as Google is very good at A-B testing this and figuring out what the highest click-through it is and what the best uh, response is for your customers. So 
I generally don't recommend pitting it just because it generally takes away from Google's ability to A-B test things and it gets you worse results. Now we can scroll down and as we can see, there are descriptions here at the bottom. I always recommend filling out all 15 headlines as well as all four descriptions down here. In order to get more descriptions, you just have to hit the plus icon. Don't do what I do here. Uh, please fill out all of these. Don't just fill out two. You're going to see much better results with it. The final thing in here is the actual URL options. Uh, if you have a tracking template, so you want to have certain customized things being tracked, uh, you can absolutely put that in here. But for a lot of people, they don't need custom tracking templates. They can do that at the campaign level. Uh, it's much easier that way. Same with the extensions. I would set this up at the campaign level. I think it's too minute for the actual ad group level. I'm sure there are certain circumstances where you could set it at the ad group level and it make a lot of sense. But for the vast majority of service-based businesses, I recommend setting up at the campaign level. It's just much easier to manage at that level. Once we're done setting and editing all of this, uh, all we have to do is hit save ad and we are good to go. Our ad has been saved. The final thing in here that you can edit inside your ad group that I would recommend editing is the actual landing pages. Now, once we actually click on this, we're not going to have any data in here because this is a demo account, but you're going to see all the landing pages. You're going to see the clicks, impressions, click through rate. And really the most important thing on this one, I would say is the actual conversion rate. So I would recommend adding that in the actual column section. So we're going to click on columns here, and then we're going to add, I'd say cost per conversion as well as conversion rate. Uh, which is right there. And then we just hit apply. And this gives us a good idea of how well our actual landing pages are doing. Now, there are a few other things. Uh, mobile speed score is important. We want our landing pages to be as quick as possible or our websites. Uh, we want to make sure that it's mobile friendly, that when people click on this on a phone or a tablet, it actually pops up and they don't got to be like uh, trying to zoom in and stuff. It, that's just a real big issue with a lot of websites that are not mobile optimized and you're going to lose a lot of clicks and conversions that way if you don't have it mobile optimized. Now that's it for everything you should be editing inside your actual ad group. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section down below. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.